did this at seven more on air and then I tried to get, ah, here we go. Perfect. All right. We are live. We are live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy webinar Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of our Lulu webinars. I am Chelsea with Lulu. I am Lulu's brand engagement manager. Um, and if you're not familiar with Lulu, then I don't know how you found these, but we are so happy to have you. Uh, we are a self-publishing and print-on-demand platform. So if you have a story to tell, we would love to help you tell it. So if you are with me today, then you are here, hopefully, for our webinar that we're going to be talking about, which is how to get started on your novel without even writing a word. So I'm pretty excited about this one. This is a little bit outside the topics we've been speaking on. So I'm really excited to dig into this. And so today we've got Tom Norman joining me, and he is the head of community at Daily Prompt. And if you don't know, Daily Prompt provides creative writing prompts to help you beat writer's block and build a daily writing habit. So we're going to jump into it, but just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Everyone who registered for this webinar will be getting a recording. They'll be sent out, I think, in about 24 hours after we are done. We'll also post it to our YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and search Lulu Press, you'll be able to find it there as well. So you can drop any questions that you have in the chat, and Tom will work through those as we go through the presentation. Any we don't get, we can save till the end. I know that he's going to be asking for um, some group activity or some group participation. So please don't uh, hesitate to jump in and answer whenever he asks or gives you some prompts to work with. So if you have a minute, I know I always love when people are dropping in where they're from. So thank you for doing that. I always love to see where everyone's tuning in from. But if you have a minute, let us know what you're working on. So this is one of the first webinars we're doing, uh, specifically speaking to fiction authors or fiction projects. So tell us what you're working on. What brought you here? And then tell us what you hope to learn from this and we'll, we'll put Tom to the test and see if he can accommodate that. So thank you again for joining us and Tom, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Josie. Um, hey everyone, it's good to be here. Um, just so, so, so lots of you in the chat saying where you are right now, just to give a little bit of context to me. Uh, I am in Valencia in Spain. Uh, I just got here about a week ago. Otherwise before that, I'm actually from the UK. I spent some time in Sicily and Slovenia this past year. So we're uh, really excited to be here. Um, and yeah, as Chelsea mentioned, I'm from Daily Prompt. I'm the head of community at Daily Prompt. Um, and today, yeah, from this webinar, you'll be getting a chance to think about preparing for your novel. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about that in just a second. So uh, yeah, just a quick intro about, um, hold on, let me get my, screen ready so quick intro to today's webinar here's what to expect i've got about 12 exercises uh selected um, and these exercises are basically chosen to help you to refine your idea for your next novel so um many people you know lots of us have great book ideas great story ideas um and it really you know a lot of us are sat there waiting and wondering what to do with it um particularly right now that's very relevant because NaNoWriMo, uh, National Novel Writing Month, is coming up in November. And that's typically a time of year when a bunch of people you know, decide to sit down and make their first 50,000 words of their book. So we're really thinking about it a lot um, now. Um, and yeah, a lot of us have this novel idea. And this, this today's webinar is a chance for you to kind of start digging in a bit deeper with the idea. Um, we break into some bits about character development, about setting, uh, about your opening scene and how you can make that better. Um, and all of this can be done without actually starting writing yet. It's kind of a chance for you to uh, explore these things before you even start writing. Um, so yeah, I've got 12 exercises, or we could call them 12 prompts. Um, and they, between each prompt, I'll give you about a minute or so in between. Uh, I wouldn't probably recommend actually doing the exercises right now. Um, you probably find it too stressful and not enough time. So I would just recommend just making any notes, uh, anything which comes to mind as in describing them, write those down now and perhaps go back later on in your own time and make the, the detailed notes for, for each of these prompts then. Uh, also towards the end of today's session, I will be giving uh, everyone um, access to Daily Prompt Premium for one month. Um, and plus there's a link to lots of other good uh, give, um, giveaways too, including uh, all, the, all the prompts from today um the links for the slides from today so obviously don't worry about making notes of the questions if you don't want to we can send them to you at the end um and also a package of uh, other prompts you can use to help you with, with your with your uh, novel so without further ado i'll explain a little bit about daily prompts and then i'll jump straight into the actual webinar itself um of course i'm going to keep checking the chat as we go so if you've got any questions along the way throw it in i'll do my best to answer them 
Um, but I think we're doing a proper Q and A at the end, so we'll we'll save most of them for then. So daily prompts. We are, as we, as um, Chelsea mentioned, we are a daily writing app. Uh, we like to call ourselves the easiest way to write every day, and the reason for that is. Uh, it gives you a brand new writing prompt every single morning. And this might be something really small, um, like a, a place to start your story from. It could be a, like a line of uh, speech or dialogue. Uh, we can continue the story from there. Uh, it might be a poem start. So it could be like a little challenge or exercise. Um, and by giving you that thing to work on in the day, it really kind of gives you a, a good, easy start to the day. Uh, also, it's, it's kind of a bit of fun as well. It's, it's a chance to write, you know, a low word count, a couple of hundred words a day. Um, just to get you writing um, and we do help you to come up with writing streaks uh, and insights about your work so you can keep on top of your progress um, and I think most importantly as the head of community I should say this most importantly it's also a chance to meet other writers and to get feedback uh, on your work as well so super excited to be representing daily prompts today and I hope we can help you out with uh, the prompts we've come up with for today's session so the question is, how do you get started uh, on your novel without writing a single word of it? Um, we've done, we've had over 30,000 writing submitted in daily prompts. Um, that means millions of words written. And we've done a bit of digging about, you know, what people get right, what people don't get so right, many common mistakes. Uh, we've also done a lot of research uh, around story arcs and structures of other well-known stories and novels. So today's webinar takes uh, a look at some of those common themes or arcs. Uh, I kind of, uh, with a series of exercises and prompts, will help you to get started on your own novel. So quick intro, I'm Tom, this is me on a good day. Uh, I'm a passionate coffee drinker, thinker and human, uh, and I'm really excited to be working with thousands of people a month to help them to become better writers and um, hope I can do the same with you guys today as well. Um, so let's begin. Uh, I'm gonna crack on with the exercises now. And as I said, between each one, you might want to take some time to just make a few notes. Um, you know, whatever comes to mind as I'm speaking, write some notes, um, and then I'd recommend coming back to this at the end uh, when you've got some time to really kind of dig in deep with your answers. So prompt number one, or exercise number one, um, this is the place I like to start from, and it's just write a 100 word description of your main character's physical appearance. Okay, so consider which features are most important to mention. Uh, which might factor into the story or change the way your reader and other characters interact with your protagonist. Now, the reason this is uh, important is it's about helping um, to understand what makes your character distinctive. Um, you've got to kind of try and paint this picture in your reader's mind. And this paragraph really helps to focus uh, in your own mind's eye, first of all, so you can start to see who this character is, what features they have? Do they have a scar in their face? How do they stand? All these different bits and pieces. Are they big? Are they small? Are they old? Are they young? Um, are they tall? Are they short? How do they kind of compose themselves on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, right now, this, this 100 word description is all about you understanding as much as possible in your mind's eye about what your character looks like so that you can convey that later on through your story uh, when you do it to your readers. So I'm gonna give you about a minute. As I said, this is um, you can make some notes along the way. I'll give you about a minute to make any notes about whatever comes to mind, and we'll keep moving on uh, at a relatively fast pace so we can get through all of these uh, these exercises today. So one minute coming your way to make some notes here. Oh, Chelsea, just um, to interrupt, it looks like Sri has mentioned that there's a lot of people in a different room waiting as well. So I'm not sure if there's been like some technical issue there and if there's any way to get them. Uh, over to this room, um, just yes. in case people are missing. Yep, I will be behind the scenes trying to rescue those folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. And Suri, if you are in that other window, so we did have uh, an issue in the beginning where I X'd out of the window and thought we weren't live, so I apologize for that. Suri, if you can, uh, if you're still in that window and can still hop in that chat, if you let them know to leave and then join again, they should be all set, but I will be working back here to uh, to save those folks. So thanks for letting us know. Cheers, Chelsea. All right, 10 seconds left just to make some notes for this one. As I said, don't go into too much detail right now. Um, it's more just a chance to dump whatever comes to mind straight away, uh, and you can come on to the proper exercise a bit later on. So, um, cool. So hopefully, Sri, thanks for the answer. Hopefully, the rest of them will find us soon enough. Oh, cool. Barry said that you just need to refresh the browser. So hopefully, that works somehow. 
Um, I'll crack on with what we've got today then, and hopefully, um, even if they don't make it live, hope they can see the, the recording of this. So um, next prompt, next exercise. Um, this one is a little bit more, so if the first one was just a quick look at your character, this one is a bit more about the actual world that your character is living in, okay? So this next prompt, so this next exercise, um, is write a descriptive narrative about the world your novel is set in. So it means stepping away from your main plot, considering uh, how the world shapes your story. Um, and if, you know, think about whether your story takes place in somewhere familiar, like everyday life, whether it's set in the past, whether it's set in the future, um, what kind of uh, situation is it set in? And this is, you know, as world builders, as story builders, this is our chance to really dream big uh, and explore whatever world we want to explore for ourselves. Uh, you know, does it differ from the world we live in? Um, what rules does it have? Uh, you know, what's similar to the world we currently live in in everyday life? What's different? Um, and as you as you're kind of thinking about this, as you're bringing this together in your mind's eye, also start thinking about um, you know what how you can convey this to your reader later on. Um, a lot of people do struggle to come up with a consistent world. You know, we as writers we're typically very creative, uh, very imaginative, and have uh, you know lots of crazy ideas running through our minds. Um, so kind of getting all that consistent into one set world is really, really important. And this is a good chance to, to think about that. So again, I'll give you guys about a minute to write down any random notes that come to mind. This is more just a chance of bullet point for you to come back to later on when we do this in a bit more detail. So one minute coming up about now. Um, so somebody, Adam, earlier said that apparently pressing the screen might help a lot. Um, if you don't see it once, so maybe just tap the screen somewhere and see if there's something you can do to see the, did it work? Oh, brilliant. That's perfect. Uh, anyone who also has the same uh, issue as uh, Ron, so if you can't see the presentation, uh, I think just clicking the screen should help. Um, so just, yeah, hopefully that helps. Uh, if it doesn't, feel free to shout in the chat and we'll try and get it fixed for you. Uh, cool, that minute is up. I won't give you too much longer because um, we can come, see, come back to this in your own time and I'll continue with the, the presentation for now. So, so number two was write descriptive narrative about the world um, your novel is set in. Uh, number three is actually one of my favorites. Um, number three is detail an average day in the life of your protagonist before your story starts. And remember, don't need to be dramatic right now. It doesn't have to be some other crazy plot. It really is about the mundane and the banal things of everyday life, really. So um, it's just a chance to get into the mindset of your character, think about their behaviors, think about their actual interactions um, and their emotions. And the reason I love this one so much is because it really explores them uh, as the humans, which or I guess most of them will be humans or whatever characters they are. It helps you to explore them in a bit more detail um, and also understand their idiosyncrasies more, you know? Uh, like how do they deal with everyday life? Uh, what makes them tick? how they deal with everyday circumstances, uh, what crosses their mind on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, you know, take the character you built in the first prompt, that visual character which you built, you described the way they look. And this one's really looking at more about the, the human or the, the, the personality behind that. Um, and, you know, the reason it's super important to look at this and the reason it kind of excites me so much is because we are bringing characters to life in our stories. Um, essentially, you know, to make it realistic for the reader, we have to know how they react to daily life. We have to know how they eat breakfast, what they think about, what's going on, and this kind of thing, because that really will help you to bring this character to life. Um, and it can be really jarring if, you're re if, if you've ever really read a book or read a story where the character does something which doesn't quite feel right, it's really jarring for the reader. Um, so again, this helps you to, to understand your character as deeply as possible uh, and also paint a better picture for your reader. So I'll give you another 45 seconds or so to make a few notes here, uh, and we will uh, we'll continue going through these prompts.
cool. And the minute is almost up, so I'll, I'll start moving on. I was just taking a moment to look at some of the things you're working on. It sounds like some really uh, interesting stuff. You've got Adam working on a war plan black and espionage and future war uh, with China novel, uh, particularly relevant right now. Uh, we've got Catherine working on a uh, urban fantasy. Um, so, you know, lots of people working on some really great stuff. Um, and hopefully, you know, this helps you to, to come together with more of that plot. Um, so good luck. And we'll move on to number four in our list of prompts or exercises for today. So um, this one is the first time we've truly covered setting. We touched on it with, uh, with the world, with the world view, the world building. This time is a chance to really look at the setting itself in a bit more detail, filling in some of the blanks there. So number four is consider the main locations throughout your story. Make some notes about um, basically about where they are, how far away they are from each other, and how the characters kind of get between all these locations. Um, and again, the reason is keeping this clear map and this clear understanding of how things work and where things are really helps you to avoid any inconsistencies. Um, you know, thinking about stuff like uh, even about is it hot, is it cold, uh, are you in a forest or are you in a, um, are you in a city? Uh, everything like this will really change the way your characters live. Will change the what they're dealing with. Uh, you know, if, it, it's, if it's snowy, if it's uh, if it's cold, it's going to be a totally different environment to if it's a hot desert scenario. So this really does help you to understand uh, kind of the the I guess the the playground in which your characters are acting in. So um, yeah, this is this is number four about setting the scene, and I'll give you about forty five seconds to a minute. Just again at this point, just throw any ideas which come to mind first. You all might be bullet points for now, and you can revisit this later in your own time. All right, got 30 seconds or so left. <clears throat> All right, I think that's enough time. Um, cool, moving on then. Uh, number five now. Um, this one is, a, is another favorite of mine, actually. Um, number five is consider the first scene that the reader will see your protagonist in and write a short story about what your protagonist was doing directly before this. Um, so you might not know at this stage, especially if it's really early stages of your novel preparation, you might not know exactly uh, how you're going to introduce your reader yet, but think about roughly how they're introduced to the book. Um, and this is your chance to explore what happens just before that. Um, and the reason this is important, again, if, um, as we mentioned before, character development is really important. Getting to know your characters uh, deeply and realistically uh, is useful. And in particular, in this case, it helps you to get to know your protagonist and how they deal with the ebbs and flows of life. Um, so, you know, making sure that the flow is right um, by thinking about what they're doing just before the story starts. You can also just make sure that that's realistic. You know, does it make sense that they were uh, in this situation doing this and then the story begins? Uh, is it a realistic response for the character that you described earlier? So, um, yeah, this is just a chance to look at kind of the realisticness of your opening scene and making sure uh, it stands out. It's uh, appealing uh, and it's of course realistic as well. So I'll give you about a minute now just to make any notes which come to mind here. Um, like I said, don't worry too much. Uh, if you don't have detailed notes, you can come back to it in your own time. All right, so it's about forty-five seconds or so up. Um, you know, if if uh, if I'm going to, if if you'd like longer pauses in between, let me know in the comments. If you'd like shorter pauses, let me know in the comments. Uh, this is really, you know, up to you guys how how fast paced we do this and how much we do now and how much we do later on. So um, that was forty-five seconds up. Uh, Lou, your your novel sounds really interesting. Um, I love, you know, I love it. It's Lou's writing this nineteen thirty-four Shanghai novel about what China was like back then. And I love it when you know you combine uh, fiction with something which already happened, like historical fiction, 
I think it's always fascinating about how creative we can be when you take real life events and real life situations and can explore uh, like a fictional element to that as well. So uh, great, sounds good, Lou. Should I, okay, cool, Barry. So Barry wants slightly shorter pauses. If a few more people are in agreement there, we can cut the pauses down to maybe 30 seconds or so. I just want to give you enough chance to make it just a few notes as well, so you can come back to them later. So next up then, that was number five. Uh, next up is another favorite of mine actually, um, and a, a technique used by, uh, by Lee and Andrew Child, who write the Jack Reacher series. So this technique is uh, choose an event from the current news and place your character somewhere in this story. So you know, imagine, um, imagine something which is happening in the news right now, let's say it could be a terrorist attack, it could be global warming, it could be something completely random, it could be COVID related, whatever. And imagine how your character either reacts to that news um, or, you know, if they're even part of the action there as well and get involved. Um, and apparently, yeah, Lee and Andrew Child, uh, or I think Lee and Andrew Grant is the real names, they're actually, they use this technique with Jack Reacher. Um, and it's helped them out a lot for two reasons. One, it really helps. I can't, I can't talk enough about how important it is to develop your characters as deeply as you possibly can. It just becomes so much more realistic. So if you can do this on a regular basis, every single day, looking at the news and kind of comparing it with your characters and how they can react. If you can do that every day, you get to kind of get to know them more and more and understand the way they look at life and the way they look at the world. So that's why it's important. Uh, particularly though, in the case of uh, Lee and Andrew, um, nowadays uh, Lee is giving, is giving over to Andrew to take over from the Jack Reacher series. Um, and it's really helped that, voice to remain consistent because over all these years they've been sharing these ideas and so despite the fact that the author was officially changing and uh, andrew will be continuing um you know they've got this consistent idea of who jack reacher is and how he sees the world so it's really useful from that perspective i'm sure if you're writing this novel you're not thinking that far ahead yet but it's it's really useful anyway so uh yeah i love this prompt i hope you guys enjoy it too and uh like barry requested i'll give it another 20 seconds 30 seconds or so and then you can um we can move on to the next prompt. All right, I think that will do. Uh, and again, if you've got any um, any thoughts at the end, you can always share them at the end too, or any questions, we can talk, come to them at the end, uh, if, even if you're a bit more time at the end. Um, next up, number seven. Uh, this one is actually taking away your protagonist. We've done a lot of work on your protagonist so far. We've thought a lot about, you know, who they are as a person, what they look like, their idiosyncrasies. And now it's a chance to look at some of the other characters in the story uh, and how they might act. So take your protagonist out of the story uh, and pretend that they don't exist at all. Now, what do the lives of the other characters look like? Um, you know, do they have adventures of their own? Do they have uh, these exciting worldviews of their own? Uh, or are they simply in your story to fulfill an extra role? So consider, you know, how their life would be without the protagonist. Um, you know, you can't have a story without more than, oh, I guess you could be, very few stories don't have other characters beyond the protagonist. And so it's important that despite the fact that they might not be as important to the story, uh, you still get a chance to explore them and make them realistic too. You know, you're not going to spend quite as long as you are on the protagonist perhaps, but it's important to kind of understand them and make them feel realistic, make them feel uh, true. Um, and it also explore how they work in relation to your protagonist. Uh, do they comp complement the protagonist? Do they contrast each other? Um, you know, do they cause problems between each other? Um, so I'll leave this again, another 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, and uh, we'll keep moving on to the next prompt. Oh, Nancy, sounds like an interesting uh, novel. Um, mysterious meeting between an old man and a woman who suspects the man to be her deceased father. Sounds like a good start. Um, just to see what we all do before we move, uh, well, as we move on, uh, is anyone taking part in this year's NaNoWriMo? Uh, obviously, these prompts are a great chance for that. That's the National Novel Writing Month. Um, if you have taken part this year, throw it in the comments. Uh, I'd love to see who's actually taking part. Um, Cool, that was number seven. Number eight then is, um, this is seemingly simple as a question, but actually uh, can be quite a big you know, thing to answer. Uh, what makes your novel unique? 
Um, you know, is it a particularly unique character? Is it a special plot twist which you've got in mind? Is there an important message? Um, you know, how is this story uniquely yours? Um, and you don't feel too much pressure to come up with a perfect answer here. There's no perfect answer. Uh, it's unique because it's coming through you to the world anyway. You're the only one who can bring it to life. This exercise is simply a chance to challenge that uniqueness um, and think about the special stamp that you're bringing to this story. And almost making sure that you, uh, you know, you're not just taking another story and applying different characters to it, but you're already making this uh, novel your own. So again, I'll give you 10, 15 seconds here to move on. <clears throat> so to make some notes here. And then we'll move on. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take down some water. <clears throat> cool. Thanks so much for the for the note, Lee. I really <clears throat> really pleased that you're enjoying this so far. Um, I'll tell you really quickly. Uh, Lee asked for some information about National Novel Writing Month. Um, yeah, it started back in I think it was 1999. Uh, its short form is NaNoWriMo. I'll write that in the comments below here. And essentially, it is a chance for um, authors of you know all all levels. You could be a complete beginner. You could be a person who's published many books before. Uh, and it's a chance for authors to come and write fifty thousand words uh, of their novel in the month of November. Um, and the great thing about it is, is it's you know it's not just you doing it alone. Like so many of us, uh, if you're writing books, it's a very solo task. You're sitting at home. Uh, we're doing it alone. If we we're lucky, we might have friends and family who we can speak to it about, but typically it's a very lonely task. Whereas the great thing about NaNoWriMo is you're doing it alongside other people. Uh, you've got, you know, thousands and thousands of people elsewhere in the world taking part. Uh, and that's thousands of other people to, you know, ask for advice, to share about how good it's going, how bad it's going, and everything in between. Um, and the other great focus uh, NaNoWriMo has, and again, I'm no, in no way affiliated with NaNoWriMo. I'm just a big supporter and fan of what they do. Um, but another great thing about NaNoWriMo is that they, uh, they encourage you not to worry about making it perfect. It's about making 50,000 words on paper in the month of November. It's not about, you know, getting it perfect and making it publishable by the end of November. It's about just getting that story idea in your mind, get it down as much as you can, and then get it out, um, get it, you know, ready to be edited at the end of November. So I hope that helped, Lee. Uh, and any other questions about that or anything else, just let me know. We'll, we'll answer it at the end. So. That was how your novel is unique. Um, next up then, number nine, is write one paragraph for three auxiliary characters who will appear in your novel. Um, this is somewhat linked to the one before, um, but it's just kind of adding a bit of an addition to the one before about your auxiliary characters. Uh, in this case, you know, um, how can you expand that in more detail? Um, what more can they, are they allies of your main character? Are they rivals? Uh, what background information do they have? Uh, you know, who actually are they? We've got these characters, they show up in the year novel. Um, who are they? What lives do they have? Uh, imagine, you know, don't get too wild with this, but imagine if they had a plot of their own or a novel of their own. What would that be called? How would you take that? Um, you know, exactly who they are as people. Um, it, essentially, it's just a chance to to take the same kind of level of depth as you are with your main characters, but also taking some of your, your lesser known characters as well to do that with. Um, so I won't spend too long on this one. Uh, another 15 seconds or so, and we'll, we'll move on to the next next prompt. All right, great stuff. So three more prompts to go, uh, and a bit more at the end I can share with you um, about you know what how you can take this beyond what we've just learned today, and um, and how you can apply it to your own novels. And as we said, we'll try to do some kind of QA, Q and A at the end of this year if it helps. So um, number ten, this one: uh, create a short description of a person who is the ideal target audience for your book. Um, so make sure you understand why this story is appealing to this person um, and why this type of person uh, would like to read your novel. And the reason I like this one so much is because you know it's really, really, really difficult. Oh, Gave the game away there. It's really difficult. I, sometimes I get to stages in my own writing, uh, even if it's you know writing emails or writing whatever it might be, copy, marketing copy, whatever. I get to a stage sometimes where uh, you get stuck and you're not quite sure where to take it next. So the deeper and deeper you understand your your kind of uh, target audience, your target reader, the deeper you understand that, the more likely you are to get these points uh, right and to kind of know where to take it when you move on. 
Um, so it's up to you. I often find it really useful to have a specific person in mind. Uh, it could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be somebody you met who you know would connect with your writing. Uh, or even if you keep this vague and just kind of know uh, the type of person that they are, you know, they might be, um, uh, maybe they're readers, but they're science fiction fans, or maybe they're, I don't know, uh, retirees or whatever it might be. As long as you kind of have a kind of a detailed image or picture of uh, who they are, it can help you in those bits in the book where maybe you do get stuck and you're not quite sure which way to take it next. Um, so yeah, again, 10, 15 minutes here just to make the last of your notes. Uh, do recommend just taking this time in your own time afterwards uh, to make more detailed notes and to think a bit more about this. So yeah, 10 seconds or so left. Oh, nice. Uh, Kim, your um, your novels sound great. Um, fantasy and sci-fi, working on a novel about a horse clinician. Now that's really niche, the horse clinician thing. Uh, I love how kind of niche you've made that. And it, clearly the people reading that or the protagonist has got to be a real specific character. So uh, very cool. Good luck. Um, and let us know how it goes. So that was number 10. Uh, two more prompts to go. And then a little bit more uh, detail at the end. So this one, I like this one as well. It's really important. And I think it actually ties in quite nicely from the previous prompt. Um, you know, think about writing the blurb for your book and what might, uh, what that might look like. Um, so the blurb is good for many reasons. It helps you to think about the main plot points in your book. It helps you to think about the audience and the purpose of your story. Uh, but actually, most importantly, the blurb, essentially, the whole purpose of the blurb is to get somebody who's just glimpsed at your book to actually decide to pick up and read it. So think about what might be that thing which draws your, your target audience, the person you mentioned in this prompt here, what will bring that person in so that they're not just a, a viewer of the back of your book, they're somebody who decides, okay, I want it, and they join the, the entire book. So um, you know, what would draw your readers in? What, what is it which is gonna grab their attention? What is it which uh, will, will kind of get them eager to kind of see what's going on uh, and complete your book? Uh, so yeah, take a couple more seconds, maybe 10, 15 more seconds or so to make a few notes here. Uh, I can't speak enough about how important this one is because also it really, you know, ultimately we want to we want to get our readers excited. We want to get our readers to come on this journey with us. And this is a, a chance for you to think about what is it that gets that journey, uh, gets that reader to want to come on this journey. Why are they here? Why are they going to pick up your book? And, uh, you know, why are they going to get involved? So uh, yeah, number 11, probably one of my favorite books. Oh, great question, uh, Aram. I think we'll come on to that at the end if possible, but I'll make a note of it just to make sure we, um, we don't forget it. So uh, just uh, give me a second to make a note of that. Uh, really good question, we'll come on to that at the end. Um, all right, so we are almost at the end of the prompts, uh, at least for, for now. Uh, number 12, last but not least, um, consider where you want your story to end and write what happens the day after the final moment. Um, now, this is quite similar to you know the prompt about what happens before the first opening scene of your novel, and it's very much um, keeping with the same philosophy. Um, you know, to make sure that your novel is consistent, to make sure it's realistic, it's really important that it ends in a good place, that it ends where it makes sense and that you haven't got anything unresolved. You know, if, at the end, is there something which the, uh, the reader is desperately wanting to know? Is there a, a subplot or a plot or something in your mind which you haven't quite uh, ironed out yet at the end? So by thinking about what happens the next day, it really helps you to understand, aha, this is a bit which is missing. Oh, this is something I need to include. Um, you know, it's, it's just a chance for you to kind of make sure that, that consistency and that realisticness is uh, is covered as you come to the end of your novel. So I'll give you again another 10, 15 seconds there, and we'll, uh, we'll come up to a bit at the end with a bit more of a conclusion. Interesting. I'm not so familiar with John Irving, David, but uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, the next day could be the next novel. If you're lucky enough to have a very exciting character who just can't stop being in novels, you could definitely use the uh, the next day as the next novel. 
Uh, all right, cool. So I'll continue a few more. I've got a couple more slides with a bit more context and some more information about other ways you can uh, you can take these. Um, and then perhaps I'll invite Chelsea back and we can have a quick Q&A at the end um, before we wrap up for the day. So uh, next up, um, these were 12 prompts. We've actually got 19 more uh, you can use. If you found this useful, if you kind of uh, like digging into your, your story idea and would like to kind of, um, you know, dig a bit deeper, we've got 19 more we can use uh, this month. Um, and, you know, we're not going to throw them at you with a price. We can also give them to free. Um, you can do that either if you're on iOS, uh, yeah, iOS or iPad, you can actually sign up to Daily Prompt and create your account on Daily Prompt, the app. And if you email me with this, with my email address here, um, I can get you access for one month for free. And that means you can do all of these prompts. You can get yourself completely prepared for NaNoWriMo. Um, and that's a great chance to, you know, just explore your story idea even more. Um, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Even if you're not on iOS, uh, we can also uh, make sure you get access to all of the prompts anyway, even if you're not on iOS. Um, so I've actually got a link. I'll sh I can share it in the notes now. Um, and then, yeah, if you, if you check out the link later, it's got uh, the slides for today's webinar. It's got all of the prompts, including the ones from today, but all the other prompts uh, mentioned before. Um, and it also has um, more information about how to claim your free, uh, your free month of daily prompt. Uh, so this is a link. I'm going to quickly post it in the new chat too. And then that's pretty much it. I can open up a Q&A. So let me just post this in the chat. That is your link. Use that to claim all the, the free stuff I just mentioned. Um, and I'd like to invite Chelsea back if possible to have a quick Q&A before we finish up. Hi. Yes. All right. Can you hear me, Tom? I can. Loud and clear. All right. Cool. Thank you for everyone who stuck through to the end. And for anyone who is listening to the replay and got lost in the shuffle, I apologize. That is completely user error on my on my part. Uh, but Tom, thank you so much. I definitely my favorite were uh, five and six. So anyone who who is still here, can you drop your questions in the chat if you have any or let us know what your favorite prompts were. And while those are coming in, I know that we had a few, but I have a question for you, Tom. So after going through these prompts, when do you know that you're ready to start writing? Do you have any tips for like when you cross that finish line of kind of the practice and you're ready to, to go into the real game? I mean, I don't think as, as a, anyone knows when exactly ready to start writing. But what I would say is the whole reason for doing this is to get as deep as possible within your story, within your characters. So almost the urge to, you can't keep it in anymore, right? Once you've got, your, once you've got to know your character enough that they're living within you, you're thinking about them a lot, Every day you're waking up thinking, oh, how would they deal with this? How would they act here? I think that's when you're ready to bring this novel alive. And um, yeah, hopefully this can rekindle that relationship with the, with the protagonist and help you to build that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I know that we had, uh, Aram had a question about doubts and you kind of touched on this, but for anyone who has written the book and they are doubting, you know, will people like it? Is it ready to go live? Am I ready to share this with the world? Any words of wisdom there? Uh, yeah, so sorry, I just got distracted because somebody said that the um, the link wasn't working, but I will come on to that later. Um, sorry, Lee, if it's not working, I will check it later and make sure it's working for you. Um, yeah, so if you're doubting, definitely, I think writing groups for us, if you can find anyone else who's a writer, we're all doubting. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't, if you want to, if you want a career, if you want a hobby where you're not doubting, choose something else because this isn't for you. you there's always going to be a sense of doubt there. Um, I think the most important thing is finding other writers to connect with. Um, you know, we're all in there. Um, one way you can actually uh, you know, overcome the doubt is actually by getting people to read your work, getting other writers to check it out. I think you might have even mentioned the person who wrote this question, beta readers. So definitely um, get some beta readers if possible to check where you're at. Um, professional editing is quite important too. You know, we can, we can check it a thousand times. We might miss things that editors do, but ultimately there's never going to be a day when you're fully comfortable with it. So at some point you've just got to let it out there in the world and see what happens to it. There's a few things you can do before then just to kind of um, increase the chances of it being taken and picked up. That's right. But at the end of the day, you have to rip the bandaid off at some point and just exactly. put it out there. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, thank you for that question. And so we have another one from David. This is a good and a very timely question, but the world is rapidly changing, which slows down my revising. Should you revise a book to make it politically correct or will you never make everyone happy and just go for it? Well, 
You'll never make everyone happy, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. Uh, I wish I was, you know, intellectual enough and smart enough to know the good answer to it. Uh, I would say, you know, do as best as you can. Um, we look back at things which were okay, okay, 50 years ago, and we cringe at some of the things we're saying. So obviously try as best as possible to make sure that, you know, you're not offending anyone. Um, so, you know, try your best not to offend anyone. Uh, at the end of the day, you can't get it perfect. Some people will be pissed off with whatever you put out there. So, I, you know, don't beat yourself up over making it absolutely perfect. But, um, you know, as anyone can do, just try your best to, to also think about intention too. You know, if you're going to have some conscientious inside of the story, ask why it's there. If it's there for a really loose reason, maybe don't include it. Um, if it's like a real core part of the plot, if your character is like a really, you know, bad person and that's why it's there, perhaps then it makes sense to be included. Um, but definitely, you know, have that conversation with yourself. But ultimately, it's never going to be perfect and you're never going to be able to please everyone. So eventually, you've just got to, again, rip the band-aid off and just <laughs> let it out. Yes, yeah, Catherine dropped that in there. I think it's important to acknowledge that there will always be people who don't like your work. <laughs> no one is right for everyone. That is so true and something very, I think, important to keep top of mind. Um, and so thank you for that question. So Corey is saying, I am about 50,000 words into my novel and I feel like these prompts will help me to polish and publish. It may create rework, but I'm sure it needs it. Do these prompts make sense as a next step? Oh, for sure. Like they're, they're good for people who are just starting out. You want to polish a novel before they've even started writing, but they're also good as a chance to reflect at the end. So probably where you are, Corey, um, most because it kind of is like a polish too. Um, like you, you mentioned, it's, it is kind of just a chance to, to make sure that you've made a realistic, uh, realistic responses from your protagonist, that the storyline is realistic, um, and that you know the, the beginning and the end actually feel right and have a realistic uh, sense to them as well. So definitely it can be used before or afterwards, uh, for sure. Yeah, I love that question. I hadn't thought like once you're down the road a little bit in the writing process to to stop and think about these things. But I think any opportunity you have to to like you said, polish your work before it's published is always a good good thing to do. And it's good to take time to to do that if possible. Uh, and a lot of love for David's comment. He says, I love that question, David, because it prompts us to check into what our resistance is to what we're uncovering in our writing and research. And yeah, I loved your point, Tom, about the intention behind things, because I think it's easy to, you know, get nervous or, you know, see what's a hot topic now or what people are saying or how we're speaking and want to change it to adapt. But that's always going to be changing. Those goals posts will always be moving. So thinking of your intention and your why and like you said, your audience, which is one of the prompts that I, I really like. Yeah. Well, so uh, drop any other questions that you have in there. I have a question for you, Tom, is more kind of daily prompt related. but. Is there, you know, y'all have obviously worked with tons of authors and their daily writing habits, but is there a better way to go about it? Would you say like time-based or word count based or just kind of try to get some words in every day? Is there a best way? I think, I mean, it all depends on your goals, but I think the most important thing is just to get writing daily. Um, that's what we try to do is just to lower the barrier to entry. Um, and a lot of people don't use us to actually influence their novel they, or their book. They actually use us to kind of just warm up. You know, it's very difficult to have a, a blank screen and a flashing cursor. So if you can kind of just get started and make that lower, uh, the better entry as low as possible to get started, it's a really great place to start. And, you know, I like to think of the analogy, um, you know, when people are starting to run for the first time, some people, you know, if you start to, if you start out to try and run a 5K or a marathon, you're probably going to fail. If you give yourself the challenge, you know, only get outside for 20 minutes or five minutes, five minutes even. Mm -hmm. Once you're up for five minutes, you're probably like, oh, you know what, five minutes is fine. I'll do 10, I'll do 15. And it's kind of the same with daily prompts. Just get started. Um, and just by just by moving in the day and writing something on paper, you're likely to write more than you expected yourself to. Yeah, and I think once you kind of get that streak built up. So for me, when I'm trying to kind of build a habit or do it, I have my calendar and then you can mark off every day. And just that the, how rewarding it feels to just be able to put an X through the day and say that For you've sure. done something and then that momentum will start to carry you. So I think those are great tips. Uh, let's see. So Lou said, the plot scared me. So I've written a detailed 5,000 word outline and I feel better. So how do I deal with the fear of dialogue? I'm good on writing long form work, but there's not much dialogue in nonfiction. Hmm, interesting question. Uh, very good question. Um, I don't have, you know, I haven't got an amazing response for you, except dialogue is something which you have to practice in its own. So maybe just find dialogue exercises. There's lots of things online which help to practice dialogue. Um, it's such an important part of the novel to make it feel realistic. 
So I probably just practice, I think. Um, I haven't got a real detailed or concise answer for you there, but just practice is the most important thing when it comes to dialogue. Yes, practice makes perfect. That's what they say. <laughs> um, all right, so Patrick is asking, what is the best way to review work? Do you complete the full novel, then rework it, or do you review as you go? Um, I think one, one of the most important things is when you're writing, don't review. Like, um, that's one of the things NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Contest uh, month, sorry, is so good at, is that the focus is not on reviewing or not on editing. It's just get it all out as much as possible and then come back and review afterwards. So in my opinion, definitely, uh, everyone's different. So you might be different and work differently, but generally speaking, get everything out there. Don't get too lost in reviewing and then come back to it afterwards uh, once you've written the whole thing and then start reviewing it. Um, I know uh, a lot of people um, do it in sections. A lot of people get it edited first too. They kind of do their edits a few times, then get it edited and then come back from the editor's perspective and look at it again uh, in sections. So um, definitely, uh, that's that's my answer for that one, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a fan of writing it, getting everything out and then reviewing. I feel like if you're reviewing as you go, you'll never get, for me, I, would, I don't think I would ever get through it if I was like constantly reviewing as I went through. Uh, all yeah. right, there are a couple of Lulu specific questions. I will come back to those at the end. Uh, but Barry is saying, what's your view about having a detailed outline of the novel when first starting to write it, as opposed to knowing how you want it to end? And then after creating your characters, basically let them write the story for you. Uh, good question. I think, again, it depends on the person. Um, some people call themselves pantsers. Uh, <laughs> that's doing it by the, by the, by the, by the pants, essentially. And, I think those people would be, you know, have less restrictions and just go free reign into the story. Um, some people prefer to be a bit more structured. Um, I do think, uh, quite, and I feel quite strongly about this, the better you get to know your characters in the start, you know, the more intimately, a lot of the prompts today were character focused. And that's because essentially they are a big part of any novel that you write. So the better you know your characters, the more preparation and understanding you've got of those, I think the easier your story will come naturally. Um, and realistically, uh, rather than kind of plotting out too much in advance. So definitely characters, I think you should spend a lot of time understanding, but the novel plot itself may be a bit loose in the approach, perhaps. Perfect. All right, so we are getting to the end of the hour. So last call for questions here, and I will just quickly uh, try to answer some of these Lulu questions for y'all. So Lee is saying, how does self-publishing uh, work and how can we get into it? So for Lulu, uh, it's free to use. Our platform is free for you to use. So you just create an account and you can play around with what we have to offer. So um, basically when you want to use Lulu, you just bring your completed manuscript and your cover to our publishing platform, go through a couple prompts, and then you'll have the opportunity to sell through Lulu's bookstore or go through our global distribution option, which includes Amazon, Ingram, and Barnes and Noble. Or if you have your own website, we also have an opportunity for you to sell your work directly through your website um, with our e-commerce integrations or print API. Um, so feel free to reach out to me if you have more specific questions on that, Lee. Um, again, I'm Chelsea, and my email is cbennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T, -T, at lulu.com. Uh, and Nancy is asking a good question. Is there an app that translates a novel from French to English? There probably is, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I know uh, at Lulu, we have a partners page. If you go to lulu.com slash partners, there are some translation services that are available there, but I'm sure, and Tom, you know, maybe, you know, I don't, you know, there are probably apps that do that. I don't know if you have any tips on that, Tom. I mean, my girlfriend's a uh, works in language. I don't know, you should say um, you can trust an app to do some of it, but you definitely should get a person to actually blo uh, like localize it to the language you're trying to get into. Um, you know, Google Translate is amazing. Deeple is, ama Deeple is another one. It's amazing, but it's never going to be as good as a human, especially when it comes to really nuanced contextual stuff. So if you're thinking about a novel, definitely consider human translating that. Yes. Yeah. I think if you are at the point where you're interested in getting your novel translated, yeah, Google Translate is great at a pinch, but you probably want to work <laughs> with someone who does understand the nuances of the language you are trying to translate to. For sure. Uh, let's see. So what are you saying? Uh, you came in a bit late. Does the novel need to start with a specific amount of pages and more? So I don't you know, Tom, I don't know if you have a different answer for this, but for Lulu specifically, you know, uh, depending on the trim size of the book that you want to publish, there are some limitations or minimum page counts there. But I don't know if there's anything in the wider fiction world of, of novels that that you need to be aware of. I mean, it's, I can't remember the exact ones, but it's often done by word count. I think novella mm -hmm. is somewhere between 30,000 and 50,000. Off the top of my head, it might be slightly different. 
I think officially novels should be 60 to 80,000 and then immense or intense novels are a bit longer than that. Um, but ultimately, you know, see how long the story is. Um, you know, if you've finished at 100 pages, so be it. Some of the some of the greatest stories in the world were just 100 pages. So I think to see where your story is at and then um, and take it from there. Yeah, and actually, Suri just dropped in. Uh, Scrivener is a free app that lets you keep track of plot and character. That's great. So, Tom, do you have any, uh, as we kind of round out the hour here, do you have any other tools that can work in conjunction with Daily Prompt or any other writing tools that you would recommend that people check out? Uh, yeah, I mean, Scrivener is good. Uh, I don't think it's free. I think you get like a free trial or something, but Scrivener is really good. Um, I mean, I like good old trusty, uh, trusty Google Docs. You can't beat Google Docs right now. And I wish there was an even better solution, but actually it works really well. So Google Docs is always a good place to put down notes and stuff. Um, and Grammarly, you know, Grammarly just helps you to get, and get stuff right. So I think these three are my go-to. I know they're pretty boring and standard, but these are my go-to apps, I think. If it's not broke, I mean, we have that's one of the wonderful things about the world we live in is there are so many tools available to help you kind of build exactly what you need to write your book and get it out there. So uh, if there aren't any more questions, we'll go ahead and close out for the day. Tom, um, let us know what social handles, how to connect with Daily Prompt, how to connect with you and remind everyone uh, how they can do that. Sure. So uh, on screen right now, you can see a couple of links and stuff. Uh, I'm going to share my email address again here, just in case you didn't get the uh, the link to work for you. Um, you can follow us on most sites, just searching Daily Prompt. Um, you can find us on the App Store, currently just the Apple App Store, but hopefully Android at some point. Um, and we're launching a web app really, really soon. So if you're excited about using Daily Prompt, but don't want to do it on your phone, hang around because we'll be doing it on web really, really soon. Um, and otherwise, if you want to follow me directly, you can do it on Twitter uh, to search I am Tom Norman and I pop up pretty quickly. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Tom, thank you so much for walking us through these prompts. A lot of great things to think about, a lot of really fun thought experiments. So I hope everyone will leave uh, today knowing your characters a little bit better or understanding how to think about them. Lou said Android would be great. I echo that. I am an Android myself. So desktop, I'm holding out for that. Android's great, too. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, you will all get a recording of this uh, presentation. So stay tuned for that. If you want to review these prompts, go give Daily Prompts some love. Follow Tom on Twitter. And thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks, Tom. Bye.